Romans chapter 6. Let's read the whole chapter. One, two. Romans 6, 1 to 23. Okay, let's read this responsibly. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? For if, uh, for if we have, have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Neither yield ye your members as an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. What then shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. But God be thanked that ye were that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered and uh, delivered you. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness and to iniquity, and to iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness and to holiness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the, for the end of those things is death. Altogether, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God in heaven, Lord, I thank you once again for this time that we can study your word. I pray, Father, that you will bless us. Let the Holy Spirit speak through each every one of us. Give us a receptive heart, Lord, to understand your word. I pray, Lord, that you will uh, be glorified in our midst and give words to my mouth, Almighty God. Uh, thank you so much for the blessing of your, thy word that we are studying. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you work in our life. And thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity that we can see truth from thy word and I pray also for our pastor uh, bless him and uh, uh, give him wisdom also Lord as he preach your word this this day all these things I pray in Jesus name Amen okay you all may be stead so in uh, this chapter chapter 6 of Romans it was uh, the first statement that we can see here is a question says here what shall we say then so 
And then, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? This question is, a uh, uh, Paul introduces this idea that where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So we can see it here in v chapter 5, verse 20. Because in established ni Paul, he says that in verse 20 of chapter 5 of Romans, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did abound, uh, grace did much more abound. Paul is stating that when sin is abound, grace is abounded more. It means whatever sin we can do in the sight of God, God's grace is uh, more sufficient than our sin. So it means uh, talagang kahit gano tayo kadumi, kahit gano kadami ang ating kasalanan, but the grace of God is always there. Kaya madalas ito ang nagiging ane. Uh, kaya sinasabihan tayo yung mga ibang sect, kasi ay mga Baptist ano yan eh. Yung uh, may license to, to do sin. So we are uh, some some uh, other people or some other Christian make the grace of God as a license to sin. Uh, I remember I, re I read a, a story, a uh, Russian monk, he, I uh, forget his name, uh, Rasputin, yung last thing, uh, he taught and he, he lived about the idea that if you want to be saved, you do more sin. Because as you do more sin, God's grace will will abound unto you and that's the way of his salvation that's why his life is uh, he lived his life as uh, full of sin and then he said uh, when you do that sin God's grace will be will abound and you will receive the grace of God it means that uh, he, he thought that the, the job of God is to forgive us and our job is to do sin so Parang ganun ang sinasabi niya. Kailangan gumawa ka ng marami. But, dit, but here, in chapter number 6, Paul is uh, stating uh, here, it says here, What shall we say then? Anong masasabi natin tungkol dito sa grace ng Panginoon? Shall we continue in sin? So that is our title of our uh, lesson today. Shall we continue in sin? Uh, so he now, uh, Paul wonders if someone might take his truth to imply that it doesn't matter if Christian lives a life of sin because God will always overcome greater sin with greater grace. That's what he stated here in verse 20. But in verse number 1 of chapter 6 of Romans, he asked a question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Parang sinasabi niya, kailangan ba natin talagang gumawa, magpatuloy sa ating mga kasalanan? upang makamta natin ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Now, Paul is asking us this question, shall we continue in sin? Now, let's look at the reason why we don't need to continue to sin. But remember, sin must have no dominion over us. Because we are the Son of God, we are uh, the believer, we are uh, Christian. You know sin, it is like a wild animal inside a cage. Sino nakapunta sa Manila Zoo o sa zoo? Marami na, di ba? Makita tayo mga wild animals. But they cannot harm us until they are inside the cage. But if you will go inside that cage, what will happen to you? Your life must be in danger, your body, or you might be die. Okay? So ganun din po yung kasalanan. Ang kasalanan, hanggat hindi, dahil tayo kristyano, meron tayong bako, di ang Panginoon. Hindi na tayo kayang... Uh, Sakta, no, the sin had no power over us. But if we will go inside that cage, we will be in trouble. So, kaya nga minsan na uh, we are unaware that we are now, uh, we are entering the cage of sin. That's why the sin will uh, hurt us. So now, Paul is asking us this question, shall we continue in sin? Now, uh, let's look at the reason why we don't need, why we don't need to continue in sin. In verse number one, it says here, and what, uh, verse number two and three, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now ye not, now, no, uh, no, no ye not, now ye not, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his 
that. So it means here, let's look at look our condition. Our condition, number one. Our condition, we are dead in sin. In verse number two and three. And also, according to Ephesians chapter two, one and two, it says there, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the curse of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You know, in Christ, our condition is we are dead in sin. Patay na po tayo sa kasalanan. Do you know what dead means? Dead means uh, yung wala siyang kakayanan gumawa. Nakakita, have you seen a dead person in awake? Yung patay na tumayo. <laughs> no, yung awake, yung lamay. Di ba? Kahit anong gawin nyo, kahit sipasipain nyo, even you kick them, you say bad words to them, they didn't even care. They don't even move. Kapag gumalaw sila, ayun na, baka ano na yun. Delikado na yun. So, kasi ganun yung patay. Dead has no any uh, power to do anything because they are dead. Same as in our spiritual condition, we are dead in sin. That is our condition. That's why it is not, there is a, uh, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, we cannot say that we can continue in sin. Because according to the word of God, we are dead in sin. And uh, we don't have any relationship with sin. A life of sin is unacceptable because our death to sin changes our relationship to sin. Before, we are, close rela- we are in close relationship in sin. But now, because we are dead in sin, our relationship ends there because of Jesus Christ. So, ayan ang sinasabi rito. No, know ye not in verse 3, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death. Same as where Jesus died, we also died in sin. And then in verse number 4, our condition, we are not only dead in sin, but our old nature is buried. In verse number 4, it says here, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We are buried with him by baptism into death. Now, Paul is not talking about the act of water baptism here, but the spiritual reality that we are immersed into Jesus Christ by his death. Kaya nga, yung baptism hindi nakakaligtas, di ba? But we are picturing the, the act of Jesus Christ. How, what Jesus Christ did in our life. He was, uh, uh, the baptism uh, portrays the, the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was uh, uh, die, we also die with Him. It says here, by the baptism of His death. Baptism means here, immerse. We are immersed into his death. That's why we are dead into sin. So, ayan ang sinasabi, this is a verse number <coughs> four. And then, not only our old nature is buried, kasi di ba, pag inilibing na, wala namang ano eh. Mabubuhay ulit. No? Maliban na lang na buhay ng Panginoon. So, that's what it means. We are our old nature is buried. But sometimes, our old nature are uh, lumalabas pa. No? Madalas. Kasi we are still in the flesh. So we cannot control it by ourselves, but God can help us, can control it by the Holy Spirit. According to the Word of God, uh, we need to yield to the Holy Spirit because that's the only way that we can uh, hold our old nature because our old nature is still there. Makikita natin yan, di ba? Minsan sa ating pananalita, di ba? Sa ating mga ginagawa. Minsan nga lang sa pag naglalaro tayo, di ba? Basketball, mga balik minsan old nature natin. Minsan may nagmumura pa. Nagkukwento-kwentuhan nga kami, mga sabi na, mga pastor doon. Pag magtirahan, matitindi. Mga pastor pa. Tapos minsan nagmumura pa. Kasi nandun yung old nature. But remember that we don't need to continue in sin because our condition, we are our old nature is buried in verse number 4. And let's go in verse number 5. Verse number 5, it says here, For if we have been 
planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We are victorious from sin. We are victorious from sin. That is our condition. Like Jesus Christ, <coughs> it says here, uh, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Re resurrection means his victory. It means that. that as the Lord Jesus was victorious in conquering death, we are also victorious over sin. That's why we don't need to live in sin because we are victorious. Jesus Christ conquered it. Kaya nga hindi dapat tayo yung uh, inaano ng kasalanan, yung uh, pinapasunod ng kasalanan. Nangyayari lamang yan dahil sa ating desisyon. Wala namang ibang makakapagtulak uh, sa ating gumawa ng kasalanan kundi ang ating sarili. Because sin is a choice. We need to choose. Either we will do it or do it not. So that's but Jesus Christ when he resurrected from the dead we he became victorious we also we are also victorious over sin. And not only that in verse uh, in verse number 6 it says here knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin we are crucified that's why the song i am crucified with christ when jesus christ was crucified he carried all our sin it was crucified on the cross and he uh, i remember pastor duenas uh, taught us here that jesus christ went to the to hell to throw our sin because according to the in romans uh, 323 for the wages of sin is death that's why jesus christ went to the to hell in order to throw our sin there. So I remember that preaching of Pastor Duenas. So, but we are crucified <coughs> with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. So kapag destroyed na, wala na dapat yun. Kasi minsan, God destroyed it but we still buo eyes. Binubuo na ba natin? Yung, uh, ayun, binubuo na natin. Binubo pa natin yung kasalanan. Sira, sinira na ng Panginoon eh, but pilit pa nating iginagawa. Alam nyo, nung pinag-aaralan ko to, I was really, uh, parang, uh, sabi ko pa, totoo nga talaga ito. Kasi may time sa buhay ko, talagang may gusto ko akong gawin, pero hindi ko magawa. Laging yung mga, sabi nga ni Paul sa Romans din, di ba? Do, ano ba yun yung things that you don't do, I do. Mahirap memorize yun eh. Di ba? Parang sama yan. Ah, alam niyo ba yan? Alam mo ba yung, yung, ano, yung the things I do, I do it not. Da, da, da. Saan ba yan? Pakakita, flash nga. Hindi ko ma-memorize. Mahihirap na sing gawin eh. Sa, sa romance din yun eh. Ayan. For that which I do, I allow not. For what would I, that do I not. But what I hate, do that do I. <laughs> Isang pagbasa lang, ang hirap na, di ba? Ang hirap, ang hirap basahin, ang hirap i-memorize, eh, lalo pa ipamuhay. Di ba? Hindi, pero ayan ang sinasabi ni Pablo, talagang mahirap gawin. But, pag binasa niya sa sunod, but thank be unto God, because by the Lord Jesus Christ, we can do it. We have the power over sin. If we, because we are victorious over sin. And in verse number 7, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Our condition, not only we are victorious from sin, but we are freed from sin. Pinalaya na tayo. Why don't we still act as a prisoner of sin? We are freed from sin. We are not slaves of sin anymore. We are free from it. I remember uh, from the movie Spartacus, na para dyan, Spartacus, yung Roman soldier siya. Siya isang slave na, parang gladiator. He said that that is the only freedom a slave knows. Para daw makalaya, kailangan mong mamatay kasi makikipaglaban siya. Now, it is true in our spiritual life. We are set free from sin. So, only death in sin can free us from sin. That's why if you are not dead in sin, you are not free from sin. So, how can we free from sin? We need to die. Hindi yung magpapakamalay tayo ha. No matter, we must die in sin. How we can do that? We will surrender we will repent of our sin. We will believe on what the Lord Jesus Christ did. And 
uh, because of that, we will be free from sin. So, malaya na tayo. Hindi po malaya tayong gumawa ng kasalanan. Although may kalayaan tayong gumawa ng kasalanan, pero hindi po yun. Hindi yun ang kalayaan. Para bang bumabalik ka uli sa kulungan ng kasalanan. So, we are freed from sin. Wala na tayo, hindi na tayo kontrolado ng kasalanan. But, sad to say, there are times that sin are controlling us. We're still in prison. But remember this, we are freed from sin. That is our condition. Not only that, in verse 8 to 10, now, if we, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, that hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now, our uh, condition is also we are alive in Christ. As the Lord Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, we are also alive with him. Death hath no more dominion over him, same as we are, sin must have no dominion over us. Now, we are living for Jesus. Now, Jesus Christ was uh, died <coughs> and He become alive. Now, when He become alive, we become alive also with Him. Diba? Buhay tayo sa pamamagitan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. We are alive in Christ. That's why every day of our life, we need to live for Jesus Christ. I don't know. I remember the song "Living for Jesus." Um, I, uh, oh Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thy, hindi ko na tutulay. Yung iba na pa pangangan eh, ng kambosis eh. So ganon yung ambuhay natin para na sa Panginoon, di ba? Mamuhay tayo na ayun sa kalooban ng Panginoon. But why there are times, di ba? na ang buhay natin ay parang hindi sa Panginoon. Naalala ko nga, sabi nga, kapag Sabado, ay, kapag Lunes, hanggang uh, Sabado, para mga santo tayo. Alam niyo yung pelikula sa uh, sa channel do yung San, Santi, Santino, Santino, mga santong bata yan eh. Parang ganun daw. Pero pagdating, ay, paglinggo pala, parang santo-santo. Pero pag Lunes hanggang Sabado, na ano na May pelikula yung parang Hellboy. Di ba? <laughs> Alakang sungay. Oh, may Hellboy to na, di ba? Ang bira, yung sungay, yung kapal. Di ba? Parang ganun tayo. Ma mabait tayo pag linggo. Pagdating ng lunes hanggang ano, balik na naman tayo sa ating... Parang we are not conscious. That's why we need to be conscious in God's presence in our life. We must put in our mind that God is in our heart. Kasi minsan, akala natin wala ang Panginoon, hindi tayo nakikita, di ba? Kaya patuloy tayong gumagawa ng kasalanan. Patuloy tayong uh, minsan, uh, alam na nating mali, pero na iba pa rin, yung lagi sinasabi ni Sir Alex, iba yung gumagawa ka ng kasalanan, at saka ano ba yan? Ay, parang ganun yun, Sir, di ba? Alam nyo na yung sinasabi ko. Iba yung sinasadya mo, iba yung hindi mo sinasadya. May mga kasalanan kasi hindi natin sinasadya, di ba? Halimbawa, pagtira mo, sumabla, ay, Porsche. <laughs> oh, pag ano, hindi mo sinasadya, ay, sorry, Panginoon. O kaya nang nakakapagsinungaling ka big na biglaan, di ba? Pero yung plinano mo, <laughs> alam ko na gagawin ko, sasabihin ko to ganito, di ba? Ayun ang kasalanan, matinding kasalanan yun. But that's why God provide us in 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful in just because God knows that we will commit sin. Although we are dead in sin, but we still commit sin. It doesn't mean that we are still in the bondage of sin. It means only that we are still in the flesh because we are not yet glorified. When, uh, uh, kaya nga yung preaching, sino ba yung nagsabing pastor na sabi niya, ma, ma, malapit niya nang maabot yung perfection. Si Swindoll. Parang ganun, yung sinless per perfection na maabot niya na raw. Tapos ayun, nadali siya ng babae. <laughs> si, parang si Swind, parang Swindol. Ewan ko si, 
Nakalimutan ko rin yung pangalan. So kasi, oh, ah, Swaggard pala, Swaggard Swindle. <laughs> si Swaggard. Jimmy Swaggard. Kamangang ay Swazenegger yan. <laughs> pinsan sila, pinsan. So ganun po, hindi po tayo, hindi natin maabot yun. Maabot lamang natin yun when we we are in a glorified state. So that is our condition. Why we don't need to continue in sin because we are dead in sin our old nature is buried we are victorious over sin we are freed from sin and we are alive in Christ now not only that we must do this what is our conduct when you say conduct the manner of in which person behave what 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 are we going to do in verse number 11 just here likewise <clears throat> Recon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see the first word here in verse 11, it started with the word likewise. Likewise sa uh, Tagalog, ano yan eh? Parang matalino. <laughs> likewise. Na hindi. It means application. Deep things yan. It means Application. Yung record naman means to believe. So it means exercise our faith and believe that we have entered into the death of Christ, that sin has no longer control in our life. So that's what it means here. Apostle Paul said, we need to apply it. That's why our conduct, we must live for God. Our life, we must be, <coughs> it must be given to God. We are living for God. And then in verse number 12, our conduct, don't allow sin to control us. In verse number 12, it says here, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the last thereof. So sin, don't allow sin to control us. Sometimes we are controlled by sin. We are unaware that, uh, that sin is controlling us. But we need to be uh, uh, maging mapagbantay po tayo. Diba? Sabi nga nang, sa Bible, uh, maging mapagbantay, be watchful, be vigilant because uh, our enemy is a roaring lion seeking who, may, who he may devour. Talagang uh, nagbabantay lang yan. Kaya pag hindi tayo naging maingat, if we are not aware of these things, we will be uh, yung ma madadali tayo ng kasalanan. That's why we need to live for God. <clears throat> and then, in verse number 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the last thereof. So, don't allow sin. Ah, tapos na pala yan. In verse number 13, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, use our body for God's glory. Use our body for God's glory. That's what the Bible says here in verse number 13. Now, what does our eyes look? Ano yung tinitingnan ng ating mata? Our ears hear. Ano yung pinakikinggan ng ating tenga? Our feet go. Where, where do we go from here? Isn't it where our place to be? Where do we go from here? Okay. Our hands do. What our hands do? We have two hands. It's the left and the right. <laughs> Hold them up high. It must be clean and bright. So because if we will do that, we can clap them slowly. <laughs> One, two, three. Alien. Hindi, ganun nga po. Kailangan yung katawan po natin. We need to... To... Nawala talaga kasi yung matawa eh. Sa Romans 12, 1 and 2. What? Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, brother Deo. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove 
what is that good and acceptable and, and perfect will of God. We need to offer our body as a living sacrifice. You see, sinasabi yung katawan, hindi yung kaluluwa, kasi kaluluwa natin nasa pang, sa Panginoon na yun eh. But our body, we need to give it to God. Kaya nga maging maingat tayo, lalo na ngayon, ang kasalanan eh, isang click na lang. Di ba? Madali ka, hindi mo makukontrol. Ang dami mong makikita sa internet. Minsan nga lang, nag, nagsasearch ka, nag, uh, minsan nag prepare akong preaching. Biglang mag magpa-flash na ano. To, ano to? Ang bira to. Ano to? Search ko na ba yan? Ay, <laughs> 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 hindi, hindi. <laughs> minsan ano tayo, kailangan maging maingat po tayo sa ganun. Minsan natatawa tayo, pero minsan, kala natin, kasi minsan curious tayo, ano ba to? Ay, naku, wala na. Tuloy-tuloy ka na hanggang maging vision na. Di ba? We need to be careful. Ano yung tinitingnan ng ating mata? Dapat ang ating mata gamitin natin para sa kaluwalhatian ng Panginoon. Na everything we do must give glory to God. Kailangan puro lagi, lagi nating isipin, ito ba'y makakaluwalhati sa Panginoon? Kasi ito yung purpose natin, why we are uh, here on earth. In Revelation 4.11, thou, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We are created for God's glory. So that's why use our body for God's glory. Minsan ano lang yan eh, simpleng bagay kakala natin, minsan ano na tayo eh, parang ah, okay lang yan. Ginagawa ng kamay natin, pinakikinggan natin, minsan mga nakikinig pa tayo mga, kaya nga we are, we need to be thankful for this church because before we are whatever kind of music, we are, as long as it's Christian, we are accepting here, but now, we need to be careful on what we are listening, on what we are singing. Di ba? Kaya nga, kahit minsan love song, minsan anuhin natin, bantayan natin, hindi tayo magpapakanta ng mga ng uh, mga mga maharot na kanta rito. Di ba? <laughs> Kaya nga, puro, puro, puro sa kaluwalhatian lang ng Panginoon. So, <laughs> in verse 14, tatapos na tayo. Wala pang alas is, ah. <laughs> Tatapos na. Paano papapahabain pa ito? <laughs> verse 14. 14 po tayo. Balik po tayo. Verse number 1. Hindi <laughs> kasi English to. Verse 14. It says here, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So our conduct, we we have power over sin. So ito dapat ang gawin natin dahil meron na tayong kapangyarihan sa kasalanan. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. We are under grace. Ito sinabi ni Pablo kasi kaya nga applicable din to yung mga ginagawa, pinapractice natin as a Christian. We are not under the law. Pwede natin sabihin ito, yung mga nagpa-practice ng first fruit, second fruit, third fruit. Di ba? We are not under the law, but we are under grace. That's why what we are doing, what we are practicing is <coughs> according to the grace of God, not under the law. So that's number two, our conduct. So we saw our condition, and we saw our conduct, and then last, <coughs> number three, our comfort. In verse 17, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that from of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So our comfort, we became the servant of God. Naging alipin tayo ng Panginoon. When you say, isa lang tong uh, description na sa mga Kristiyano, servants of God, not only we are servants of God, we became the Son of God. In John 1.12, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. So that's our comfort. We are, we are God's, we are owned by God. That's why we don't need to continue in sin. That's why Apostle Paul is asking us, shall we continue in sin? All of these things, 
Apostle Paul laid here our condition and the things that we need to do our conduct and our comfort kaya matatanong natin ang sarili ang tinatanong tayo dito ng Panginoon kailangan ba talaga natin magpatuloy pa sa kasalanan diba? hindi ito suggestion but it is a a question to us na ano ba ang ating ginagawa we became the servant of God in verse 17 and not only that we have eternal life verse uh, 22 but now being made free from sin and become servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so Apostle Paul, Paul here stated that the, the payment of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. We have eternal life. And I think that's, that is enough for us not to continue in sin. We are uh, the Son of God. We became the Son of God and we have eternal life. So now we can really, can we really answer from the bottom of our heart the question, shall we continue in sin? Sometimes we are unaware. We are continuing in sin. But we need to come to God in prayer, humble ourselves in the sight of God because it is the only way. Only the Holy Spirit can help us to overcome sin. Talagang mahirap pag tayo lang, di ba? Kung tayo lang ang gagawa para labanan ang kasalanan, hindi natin magagawa. For me, in my personal experience, how many times I want to stop uh, smoking and drinking. Although, ewan ko, di ba, yung mga naninigarilyo sa umpisa, sobrang pait. Una kong sigarilyo, ang sakit sa ulo. Pero, ewan ko, ba't, ba't ko pa pinagpatuloy? Tapos, nung tuloy-tuloy na, ang hirap ng pigilin. Kahit anong gawin ko, hindi, hindi mapigil. But, when I surrender it to God, so, binigyan ako ng Panginoon ng lakas upang talikuran ng kasalanan. Di ba? Halos lahat nagawa ko ang kasalanan. Maliba lang yung drugs. Ayun, drugs. Nagda-drugs ako pag, ano, pag may sakit lang. Medical yan. Aspirin. So the question to us today, are we co shall we continue in sin? So, kapag... Uh, <coughs> Buha, kapag ikay kristyano na, kailangan kakitaan na tayo ng, uh, na hindi tayo sumusunod sa kasalanan because we are freed from sin. We are alive in Christ. Sin had no dominion over us. Sin had no power over us. So we can see all of these things in, first, in chapter number 6 of Romans. So it will uh, help us or encourage us and remind us not to continue in sin. But remember, we can commit sin you know, because we are still in the flesh. But God provides that if we will confess our sin, He's there to forgive us. So thank you so much and let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for this word, this lesson.